This is the Franchise QB Podcast, where we empower entrepreneurs to win big in franchising. We huddle up weekly to educate our audience about the most successful small business model ever created, franchising. Welcome to the Franchise QB Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Halpern, a 20-year industry veteran and entrepreneur. My mission is for listeners to achieve their American dreams of creating wealth and independence through franchise ownership. Every week, we speak with franchisees, franchisors, or vendors that support the industry. Thank you for joining us, and let's get started. Welcome to the Franchise QB Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Halpern, a 20-year franchise industry veteran and entrepreneur. Today, we have a very exciting guest joining us in the huddle. Donnie Ferreira, Franchise Development Specialist at iTrip. Welcome, Donnie. Thanks for having me, Mike. I'm excited about this podcast. And I love the Entrepreneur's Kick-Ass t-shirt. That is pretty awesome. Yeah. (laughs) All right, so let's jump right in. Um, What is iTrip? Yeah, great question. So iTrip, Mike, is a property management franchise. But I have to say that we're a lot more than just a property management franchise. For 15 years, we've been the pioneers in the short-term rental industry. Now, our unique approach combines the, I'd say, the personal touch of a local property management company with the vast reach of our technological capabilities of our national brand. We have over 100 franchisees and over 100 destinations. Now, this blend of local personalized management services and our technology is what ensures that homeowners that we work with and the guests that we receive in our properties receive top-notch service, making their rental experience seamless and memorable. Got it. So you focus on the vacation, short-term rental side. We don't touch any of the other property management, like long-term and HOAs or anything like that. That is correct. So our niche, our specialty, our focus and what we do best is short-term rentals. So Airbnb, verbal properties. Yep, you just took the words out of my mouth. So when we talk about um, short-term rentals, vacation properties, everyone thinks of the household name booking sites that we're familiar with, Airbnb, VRBO. Do you compete with those guys? That's a great question. I do get asked that question very often. It it is a common misconception. So Airbnb, Verbo, or VRBO are actually allies. They're channel partners of iTrip, not competitors. In fact, we come and we list our properties on their platforms in order to maximize the exposure of the property. Now, the best news here, Mike, is that we promote properties on 80 plus booking sites. Now, what really makes us shine is our end-to-end property management services. Uh, The guest inquiries, the property maintenance and cleaning, the way that we handle and ensure that homeowners can enjoy the benefits of the property without the typical hassle of property management. So all in all, we are allies of these channel partners, not competitors, and we rely on them to promote our properties while they rely on us to provide them with properties. Yeah, I bet you get asked that question a lot. That makes perfect sense. So being partners with some of those big guys in the space has to be really helpful for the owners. So um, there's several property management franchises out there. Um, Obviously, iTrip's not the only one doing short-term and vacation rentals. Um, why would a franchise owner select iTrip? What's kind of proprietary? What is kind of the, the hook that separates iTrip from the pack? So there are a few things that sets us apart from other companies out there. The major is our top-notch state-of-the-art technology. We have our proprietary software and systems, this innovative marketing strategy that we do to help franchisees not just promote their services and attract property owners, Mike, but also attract guests' properties. Now, I do want to go back to our technology for a moment here because Verbo, and I know we're going to talk about this as well, but Verbo has recognized iTrip for the last six years as a software elite partner. Now, we're the only property management company in the world out of thousands of companies all over the world to be recognized by Verbo. Now, there's a lot of benefits to that. One of the major benefits, Mike, is the fact that we become essentially a beta tester for Verbo when it comes to uh, checking or introducing new technology into the uh, into the industry before anybody else knows we can tweak our systems to meet or exceed expectations. But above all, it's our franchisees, Mike. What sets us apart is our franchisees. They're locally owned and operated businesses, and they have this local touch, uh, boutique level touch to uh, providing property owners a better service. 
So let's talk about the franchisees. You mentioned briefly a moment ago that you have about 100 owners. Um, is that domestically? Um, and how long have you guys been operating as a franchise system? So you started off with the first owner, and now you fast forward to today, and you have 100, give or take. Um, what was that kind of progression look like? So we have over 100 franchisees and over 100 destinations. We've been around for over 15 years, organically growing, uh, finding the right candidate for ITRIS. Uh, it's, it's not that easy. We have to find the right person for ITRIP, a, a, a qualified candidate who lives in the territory, who has uh, some level of business experience or some exposure to uh, corporate America, 15 or so years of professional business experience. So our Growth in the last 15 years has been steady, has been organic. We've been doing a pretty good job in making sure that we qualify the candidates uh, to join our trip. Yeah, so let's talk about that. Uh, and that sounds like a differentiator to me when you have an owner that's in the market because a lot of brands offer either semi-absentee or full absentee investor model ownership. That's not the case with iTrip. You want your owner to be local to the market, to be hands-on. Obviously, they can build a team and they can scale. But um, is, is that personal touch, someone that lives in the market, knows the market, is in that community, kind of meaningful to, to iTrip as they select new franchisees? Yes. So one of the requirements or the qualifications for a candidate is somebody who lives in the territory. Now, there's a reason for that. Being locally owned and operated allows uh, franchisees to be nimble when it comes to managing their properties, inspecting properties on an as-needed basis visiting the properties, but above all, Mike, it's building your business through your local presence. So for example, and we're gonna talk about this as well, but common question I get asked is, how do franchisees find and convert properties to manage? So going back to living in the territory, that's a big value proposition. If you're local, if you're in the market, it allows you to better assist the property owner in uh, visiting and inspecting and maintaining their property. And homeowners love that because they can trust somebody who's local versus somebody who's living in a different state or even a different country. Very interesting. So let's talk marketing. As a franchise owner, you obviously have to recruit property owners that are going to trust the iTrip franchisee to kind of manage their property. And then um, th there has to be bookings, right? So um, let's, let's kind of talk about the booking side. Um, you know, how does I trip because I, I get online, I'll search, um, maybe I want to go on vacation next week, next month, and I'll type something in and then I kind of abandon my cart, so to speak, and I move on. How do you capture that audience of people that are looking but aren't ready to actually book at that moment? Yeah, that's a great observation. So you probably went to Amazon.com and you search for I don't know, a vacuum, and then you didn't buy that vacuum, and then later on you went to Facebook or LinkedIn or Instagram, and that same exact vacuum mic popped up everywhere. Uh, that's called capturing cookies and IP addresses and remarketing. So we do that very well. We have a, a very good team and a technology and a system that helps us remarket iTrip to folks that clicked on our properties but didn't book the property. So if you click on one of our properties on our website and then you don't book that property, guess what's going to happen? That property is going to pop, pop up everywhere. <laughs> yes. And I can <laughs> see that that's media. a lot more effective, probably more effective than a vacuum because that vacuum keeps <laughs> popping up and I just want to get away from it. Whereas that vacation I want to take, I, I want that to follow yeah, me around because yeah. eventually I'm going to book it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's cool. So let's talk about the revenue streams that iTrip offers. And I can imagine there's a lot of tentacles in terms of different ways that franchise owners can generate revenue. Clearly, there's booking fee revenue. Ex explain to us some of the other options that a uh, an owner enjoys to kind of earn revenue in this model. Yeah, absolutely. So iTrip is a scalable model with six residual income streams. Let me talk about them really quickly. So the main income stream is what we call the management fee. Now, a typical management fee, Mike, varies from market to market, from state to state, even from franchisee to franchisee. But the national range is 18 to 35 percent of the nightly rate. So think of it as a commission. So the management fee is one. Then you got the cleaning fee markups where the guest page markup the fees. There's also uh, admin processing fees, also known as booking fees, or travel insurance, limited damage waiver, and my favorite, an exclusive free fund e-concierge service 
by a very renowned company by the name of Explorey. It's X-P-L-O-R-I-E, if you're interested in checking them out. So these are the six okay. income streams. The management fee would definitely be the largest. Got it. So um, talking about that kind of concierge service, does that enable the guests to really better enjoy the amenities of the community that they may not be familiar with and get shown around a little bit, just like if you're in a hotel? That and it allows the guests to have a better experience and it attracts more guests to book your property because when a guest is traveling and Mike, you've uh, been in this industry and you've booked a short term on a property before and traveling with a family, oftentimes you want to be able to book activities up front, get a calendar ready for your family to enjoy the trip. So Explory does a great job in helping you plan your trip and schedule these activities. But the best part is that with Explory and iTrip's partnership, the guest receives one free activity of their choosing per day. So they can choose a free activity to enjoy. And essentially that helps franchisees attract more guests. That sounds really cool. Very neat. So um, do iTrip owners have to come to the table with their own real estate or own properties to manage to become an owner? Or is that not a requirement? So the fact that iTrip is a service business, you don't have to own any properties. Uh, it's not a requirement of iTrip per se. Now, some franchisees do own properties, but it's not a requirement because you're essentially promoting your property management services and converting properties to manage that are owned by somebody else. Now, all you need to own an iTrip franchise, Mike, believe it or not, is a car, a phone, a printer, and a computer, and maybe a nice espresso and coffee machine to drink <laughs> while you're working from home. Not a, not a brick and mortar model, a relatively yep. um, easy startup. We're going to we're talking working capital. So why don't we jump right in and talk about the item seven? Because you offer, uh, depending on either, and you can kind of define this for us, either population count or inventory of rental properties. You have a smaller boutique market option for a, a new franchise owner or a primary market territory. What's the difference and how much does it cost to start in each of those two models? Yeah, absolutely. So we do have two levels of investment. We have what's called a boutique market that is $55,000 working capital. And we also have a primary market, which is $75,000 plus working capital. Now, the only difference, Mike, between a boutique and a primary market is, like you mentioned, the inventory of property. So a boutique market will have a smaller concentration or a smaller number of properties that you could promote your services versus a primary market has a larger footprint or a larger portfolio of properties that you can promote your services to. Now, I want to clarify something. We're not implying that with a boutique market, you can make less money than a primary market. That's not the case. In fact, some people actually uh, who own a boutique market arguably make more money than somebody who owns a primary market because the bottom line is not the available portfolio. It's the properties that you're managing. A typical property manager of iTrip manages about 40, 50 to 60 properties. Okay, very cool. Um, so I'm sure you guys have some larger owners. Is there a number of kind of the top couple of franchisees, how many properties they have in their inventory. Yeah, and it's always a, a, a proud uh, a moment for us to talk about this because we have franchisees who are overachievers, franchisees that are passionate about iTrip and they're working very hard, they're building their business, they're scaling, they're go-getters, they're entrepreneurs like I got here on my shirt. And a lot of these <laughs> franchisees are managing over a hundred properties, Mike. It's unbelievable the system that they have and the, the fact that they've been able to uh, fully take advantage of our technology and automation to be able to manage over 100 properties because it makes sense. How in the world does a property manager check in 30, 40, 50 guests at the same time in the same day? Well, first you got to be an entrepreneur with a lot of grit to do so, but you also have to be able to take full advantage of the iTrip technology and automation to do so, which is why franchisees are able to get to 100 properties if they want to, 150. The highest I've seen was about 180, almost 200 properties, which is Very cool. So you talked a little bit about um, the item 19. Let's, I know that there are certain numbers you can't share for legal reasons, but what can you tell us about um, what an iTrip can expect to earn um, when they kind of start out with you guys? Great question. So as you know, I can't really delve into these specific numbers of item 19 and all that, but I do know, and I can share with everybody that our item 19 is very promising. It paints a very promising picture. It 
essentially highlights the potential for substantial revenue growth. It showcases the the uh, achievements of our existing franchisees and also the resilience of our business model. Now, ITRIP is an executive level income potential. Executive, generally speaking, means six figures, low six figures. That's what a typical uh, franchisee who's working hard, who's putting a lot of sweat equity in the business can get to as long as they follow the system. And that's a very interesting uh, uh, concept franchising in general and Mike you've been in franchising for decades and you know that a successful franchisee who's making money is somebody who follows the system who follows the process that the franchisor has established so item 19 we have it not every franchisor has an item 19 because as you know it's not a requirement for a franchisor to have but we believe in transparency so we're more than happy to share our item 19 for uh, anybody who's interested in seeing it very cool. So let's kind of segue into who iTrip's looking for. Um, you mentioned a couple of characteristics, but what does an ideal iTrip franchise owner look like when you're talking yep. to candidates and trying to make sure that it's the right fit, cultural fit, financial fit, um, geographic fit? What, what are you looking for? And you, you say to yourself, wow, this person's going to be a dynamite owner in our, in our system. So above all, I'm looking for somebody who follows a process, who follows a system, a proven system. And then you have your typical qualifications. Somebody who lives in the territory or not too far away from the territory, and that's due to the, the work that it takes to build your business, to scale, but also to manage your existing properties under management. So locally owned and operated. Generally speaking, we don't want somebody that's 40 minutes or further than 40 minutes from the territory. So within a 40 minute drive is perfectly acceptable. 15 or so, that's one five, 15 or so years of professional business experience. And also the most important one is somebody who is looking for a full-time ownership opportunity. Now it is full-time initially, but eventually as you start to grow and scale, you can eventually hire employees and uh, grow your business and have more freedom and flexibility of time while having somebody work for you. Yeah, so you mentioned kind of scaling it with employees. So is there a certain number of properties when you have to just expand the staff? So you say, okay, when we hit these revenue benchmarks or property benchmarks, then this is what your team's going to look like for the next phase and so on and so forth. So you can kind of show a, an owner a roadmap from securing the first couple of uh, rental properties through getting to that 100 unit plus mark. Yeah, so... The tipping point, generally speaking, does vary from franchisee to franchisee because every franchisee is different. Every own core competencies and everybody has their own way of dealing with the scalability aspect of iTrip, the ability to multitask and manage a certain number of properties. But what I typically see in our system, Mike, is 40 to 50 properties is typically the tipping point where a franchise owner, an iTrip franchise owner, determines that, you know, hey, it's probably a good time now for me to hire somebody because two reasons. One, I've already grown the business, and also two, I have sufficient revenue coming in to be able to afford an employee. So that's all to say that you start out as an owner operator working full time. That's the initial approach. And then as your business flourishes as you start to grow and scale franchisees have the flexibility to onboard employees which then allows them to oversee the operations and potentially transition into more of a semi absentee role and when they do that do you find that some of those owners elect to get some space where they can kind of meet as a company and have physical space because um, i know obviously it starts as kind of a home-based model but do you find that once there's a critical mass of properties and staff that it's like okay let's lease a thousand feet, 2000 feet and, and kind of hang a shingle. Yes. So some franchisees do eventually leave their home base as an office. It's not a requirement. It's not really a necessity, but some franchisees do, and it gives them a little more flexibility to, like you mentioned, have employees working in the office and also have a place to uh, 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 store things in order for you to, um, uh, be able to manage your property. So yes, start out home-based. Eventually, if you want to, you can transition into a, an office. Very cool. This has been really informative. Um, anything else you want to add to the mix that I didn't ask or we didn't get to before we wrap up? Well, Mike, I want to say that we are so fortunate to be working with you and we appreciate your 
uh, your the time that you spend putting this uh, podcast together and everything that you do for the franchise industry. Now, I do like to say that iTrip is a very unique business opportunity. It's not for everybody. So if you're interested in exploring iTrip and learning about uh, what it takes to run an iTrip business, uh, we have a nine-step self-selected discovery process where uh, your clients, Mike, will be able to go through the discovery process at their own pace and learn about the iTrip opportunity. There's no commitments. Uh, you can go through the process. And if you find out that this is not the right opportunity for you, you can always opt out at any time, part ways as friends. But if you're interested in moving forward and uh, joining iTrip, we welcome you, we embrace you, and uh, look forward to uh, working with you in the future with uh, anybody who's interested in iTrip. Very cool. Thanks, Donnie. And you know I enjoy working with you and Vicky and the team over there at iTrip. So if you would like to connect with Donnie and his team to learn more about the process to own an iTrip franchise territory, contact me at FranchiseQB.com or on Twitter at QB franchise QB, and I'll get you connected with Donnie. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your awesome Entrepreneur's Kick-Ass t-shirt. And uh, yes, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate everything you do. Thank you for listening to the Franchise QB podcast, where you're at the helm of your future as a franchise owner. If you enjoyed the content, please rate the show and recommend it to anyone that might be interested in franchising. Make sure to visit FranchiseQB.com to subscribe to my newsletter and for an actionable playbook to go from walk-on to legend in your new business. Follow us on Twitter at QB Franchise QB and join us every week for a new episode. See you next time. Visit FranchiseQB.com to take the next step of your journey towards wealth, independence, and franchise ownership. And remember, when working for the man gets old, you must do something bold. Thank you for listening.